three-phase rectification. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at single-phase rectification, three-phase rectification, pulse rates, and controllable rectifiers. Remember that rectification is the making of DC voltage from an AC voltage source. Half-wave rectification in a single-wave system is accomplished through use of a single diode. The diode is connected in series with both the DC load and the AC source, and since it is polarity sensitive, will only be forward biased for one alternation out of a sine wave cycle. Due to this, a single diode in a rectification scenario will output a very choppy DC voltage to the load. And due to this large gap of zero volts between the positive bumps will render a very low DC voltage. For single phase half wave rectified systems, the E max of the AC system multiplied by 0 0.318 would then equal the E average or DC voltage measured. By contrast, a full wave rectification system uses four diodes, either manually assembled together and soldered or as a single solid state component, which we see on the right hand side. There are two connections for AC and two connections for DC. In this situation, we have not only the positive alternation on the AC sine wave, but the negative alternation that is then translated to positive on the DC output side. In this situation, we have four diodes where a pair is conducting at any given moment. Due to the lack of zero volts being applied across the load, the DC voltage that we would expect to measure is much higher. For single wave phase full wave rectifiers, the Emax value of the AC sine wave times 0.637 would equal the volt DC meter measurement value. There are two methods to rectify three-phase AC sources, half-wave and full-wave. In half-wave systems, we require three individual diodes with a common connection on the end of the pointing uh, section. So we have here a common connection. We also require a connection to the neutral of the source. This then restricts three-phase half-wave rectifier systems, typically to Y-connected three-phase sources. The voltage that we would expect across the DC load of this system would be equivalent to the E-phase value times 1.17, E-phase being the RMS voltage. The DC load connected to the common junction point of all the diodes and the other end connected to the neutral of the three-phase source for this particular system with 120 volt phase windings would render 140.4 volts DC. Let's take a look at an animation as to how this works. Remember that when we're looking at three phase, there's really only one phase that is pushing 100% in one direction. So we can see here that there's really only one diode conducting at any given moment. We can see the DC waveform across the load. It is much better than single phase full wave, but there is still quite a bump as we move from A to B to C and back to A. Now the amount of bump that we get is referred to as the ripple frequency. And the ripple frequency can be calculated by taking the number of diodes in this situation and multiplying it by the supply frequency, which would be 60. So 3 times 60 would equal 180 hertz ripple frequency on the DC output. The other form of rectification we have is three-phase full wave. In this situation, no neutral is required, but we do need six diodes. In this particular arrangement, all the diodes face the same direction. They are all connected tip to tail in three single lines. And the three phase is connected as we see here. Finally, the load is connected in parallel with the entire assembly. 
the average DC voltage that we would expect to measure across a load in a full wave three phase rectified system is the line voltage times 1.35. The line voltage in this system being 208 times 1.35 equals 280.8 volts DC. Let's look at an animation of this system. We can see with the AC on the far left hand side that only one diode is going to be conducting at any given moment. But notice that because of the orientation of the three or the six diodes, that it's actually conducting for both the positive and the negative alternations, which is the same as what we would expect to see in the full wave single phase rectified circuit. In this way, we can see there is far less uh, big drops in the voltage from the peak value down to where we transition to the next phase. Again, ripple frequency can be calculated. And because we have six diodes, six times 60 gives me a output ripple frequency on the DC of 360 Hertz. We've already looked at two pulse rectifier, which would be a single phase full wave rectifier. We have 120 Hertz ripple. With three pulse rectifier, we go up to 180 Hertz ripple. With six pulse rectifiers or three phase full wave, we go to 360 Hertz ripple. And we even have systems that require the use of a separate transformer which would be a 12 pulse rectifier. Now this is a far more complicated system, one that we do not delve into, but what you'll notice is that the ripple frequency has increased substantially up to 720 on a 60 Hertz system. The end result of looking at these different ripple frequencies is that high ripple frequencies generate more constant DC voltage and are seen as a good thing. Rectifiers can be controlled, and we know that we can control them through the use of SCRs. We have rectifiers that are semi-controlled, as in this situation, where only two of the diodes have been replaced with SCRs. We have full-controlled rectifiers, where we have all of the uh, polarity-sensitive control devices being SCRs. We also have a much more simplified version of this by putting a single SCR in series with the DC load. In three phase, we have the same type of function. We can have full wave semi-controlled systems where half of the uh, diodes are replaced with SCRs, or we can replace them all with SCRs. In either way, we have control over the DC voltage that is generated through the rectifier. Controlled rectifiers and standard three-phase rectifiers are all over industry. This is an example of a standard non-controlled three-phase full-wave rectifier. There are six diodes mounted in this assembly and there are five bus bars. The three bus bars at the bottom are for the three-phase. The two bus bars on the upper right-hand side of the assembly are for the positive and negative DC. This is a much smaller uh, rectified system. We see there are six diodes, which means this again is a full wave three-phase rectifier. Yet another one, but much smaller with significant cooling fins on the side to wick the heat away from the solid state components in the center. Battery chargers utilize controllable and uncontrolled rectifiers in order to charge batteries. UPS systems are an example of an item that charges batteries and it uses the AC coming from the grid in order to do this. Welders use controllable and uncontrolled uh, three-phase rectifiers in order to establish the uh, welding arc in order to connect pieces of metal together and VFDs, which is a component that we're going to look at in far greater detail later in this course. 
we can have rectified portions inside the VFD, which take the three phase coming from the supply, convert it to DC, and then we use something called an IGVT in order to invert that DC voltage back to a three phase AC. Power supplies for LED lighting, as well as cathodic protection systems where we use DC current in order to protect uh, the slow degradation of metal that is in contact with the earth. So instead of it rusting and galvanic corrosion slowly uh, weakening metal structures, we can use a DC source in order to reverse or prevent that slow degradation.